Can you wave your hand to me? And somebody say, we thank you, Jesus. I want to talk about something here. Because the Lord has been ministering to me in some few weeks ago. How altars can affect the lives of people. And I want to say first, most of us, we have heard about it. But I want to tell you this. You need to know the meaning of an altar. Altar or a shrine is a place of divine encounter. Be it a deity be it God of heaven. You don't meet with divinity without an altar. Bila madhabahu. Altars madhabahu determines whom you worship. If there is an altar Kama kuna madhabahu, that you set in your place ambao and you have a certain God there. Na uko na miungu pale. That altar becomes a point of connection. Iyo madhabahu inakuwa ni mahali pa kunganika. Where there is an altar. Mahali kuna madhabahu. There is a divinity. Kuna uungu. And there is a certain force of na kuna nguvu fulani. That controls the lives of people in that particular place. Ambayo inadhibiti maisha ya watu mahali pale. If the altar in the land is satanic. Kama madhabahu katika nchi ni ya kishetani. Then it means the force behind that altar controls the lives of people around that area. Inamaanisha nguvu kutoka kwa hiyo madhabahu inadhibiti maisha ya watu walio pale. And that altar. Na hiyo madhabahu will determine prosperity and the success of the people or failure of the people. Itaamua ufanisi ama kushindwa kwa and for the altar to function any altar to work in your life altars requires what we call sacrifice altar become meaningless without a sacrifice so altar requires what we call sacrifice. Inaitaji madha, uh, inaitaji so altars are serviced Madhabahu by offerings and sacrifices. Kwa sadaka na dhabihu. If an altar Kama madhabahu, which men have made covenant with it watu gano nayo, is not given sacrifices properly vizuri, that altar can retaliate iyo inaweza ikapigana. and walk negatively against the people living there. So, any altar that men erect it must be serviced properly. If it is God of heaven altar it must be serviced by sacrifices and offerings. If it is an altar to any deity, it must be serviced. So there is no place in this world that is vacant without an altar. Where you are today, we always give sacrifices and offerings because we believe here there is a point of conduct between us and divinity. So as we were worshipping God with our offerings we were fulfilling our mandates and our assignments and our covenants with Jehovah God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. So this place already is occupied and there is no any altar other altar that can be erected here and this altar here can determine the lives of people living around here because there is power here maybe unseen power but there is power that can affect the lives of people if this altar if this altar 
is against a strong atness. It's against a sexual immorality. It's against abortion. It's against demonic activities. Then those things must stop in this area. As we continue to serve as this altar, things are going to happen that will affect their lives. That's why you will see prostitutes coming to the church. You will see abortion committers will come to the church. You will see criminals coming to here. Because the altar speaks. Can someone say amen? Praise the Lord. So I know many communities who have so many altars. We know Indians. They have over 4 million deities in their lands. And all of them are worshipped. And all of them have altars. All those altars requires services. So they give sometimes milk. They give their silver coins. They give their animals. Some give their children. So that is what altar require. You cannot give anything without erecting an altar. That's why God, when he called Abraham to Mount Moria, he told Abraham, come with your only son, the son that whom you love, come with him to Mount Moria, so that you can sacrifice him to me. So the Bible says, when Abraham arrived on the top of Mount Moria, he erected an altar first according to the plans of God. And after that now, he attempted to slaughter his son. And because the altar was proper constructed, God already had appeared in that place with a replacement of Isaac. God gave a lamp to replace Isaac because the altar was ready. When an altar is is, construct, is constructed properly in your life. You will not struggle to pray. You will just say a word and it shall be established. Because the altar is constructed properly. So today I want to talk about the correct and the wrong altars. Evil altars can speak evil into your life. Evil altars can cause discrimination into your life. Am I communicating to anyone? Praise the name of the Lord. Najua watu wengine wale wametoka vijijini labda tusi elewane. Kwa hiki kwa shindo siya kupikita kwa bunu olimba resabe. Munataka tuonge kiswahili na kikale njini. Ya? Kutaonge wa kikale. Najua sisi hapa tujui nungumu. Praise the Lord. There are some things which is very difficult to interpret or to translate. Kuna mamba mbao ni magumu kuweza kuelezea katika kale nji. So, English is a foreign language. Kizungu ni luga mbao ni akigeni. But it has a very rich language here. So, it has a very rich, it's very rich. Lakini ni tajiri ama ikona maneno mengi ya kuelezea. You can get many ways to explain something. Unaweza pata njia mingi ya kuweza kuelezea jambo than when you are stalking in Kalenjin. Kalenjin is a very narrow language. There are some things, if I tell you in English, you will never know in Kalenjin. Amen. Amen. But I, I, I want you to be patient with me. Today, you will get out of this place when your aerial is 
touching heaven. Wakati aerial yako inaguza mbinguni. You you will walk today around. Utatembea leo. In the name of Jesus. Kwa jina la Yesu. Receiving all question from heaven. Ukipokea mawasiliano yote toka mbinguni. Amen. Amina. Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. So I want to say this first. Nataka niseme hii kwanza. Altar. Madhabahu. Amen. Amina. There are some altars. Kuna madhabahu. That they are serviced. Ambayo ina inahitaji huduma. Inahudumiwa. Inahudumiwa by men. Na watu in their ignorance katika kutojua kwao or without their knowledge ama bila wao kujua you just find yourself doing funny things unajipata ukifanya mambo usiyoyaelewa amen amina are we together je tuko pamoja you are, have you ever had somebody saying i always after two weeks i, I chop my ends Umeisikia mtu anasema baada ya kila wiki mbili najikata vidole. And you don't know why. Na ujui ni kwa nini? Find yourself chopping your fingers. Unajipata tu umekata kidole. Unakata kidole damu zinamwagika. Itile hutaki kwa kupanga ratiki. Unajaribu kupanguza. Yeti ya mileusi. Na ulikuwa careful ukikata. Akogetile and carry begea got missing. Damu ikaenda chini. Kotumtangia kwa ratiki. Alafu na una, una jaribu kutibu baka inapona. Iti amanyu ni inya kutaka igosam. Tena baada ya wiki mbili. Yebe kuigisi kala kwa yangu. Kidole ingine. Iti si yata ke. Damu inaenda chini. Kwa tumdake kwa roti. Unapanguza. Ius. Na unaona ni makosa ya mkono. Aki kiri kwa ulenga makosa ya ius. Na makosa ya kisu ni kale. Ana kale taati missing roti. Wacha nuambie. Na na muawak. Kwa ufalme wa mungu. Enk. Ebona teta Jehova. Hakuna ajali. Mamiten kwa nyasuti yetu. Ajali ni kwa watu. Nyasuti yetu kwa embi. Lakini kwa Mungu hakuna ajali. Lakini yangi mtaya yetu kama mimi nyasuti yetu. So wewe uchui mali ilianza. Inyego mengi ngole kina amenono. Lakini kwa Mungu zinajulikana mali ilianza. Lakini yangi mtaya yetu kwa ngole kina amenono. Na kwa sababu wanadamu hawawezi kujua vitu vya Mungu. Ago amuma ngengi kwa sababu tuko kwa Jehova. Mungu anaweza kutupea uwezo. Kwa muje kwa kwa neto baka amugeza. Ya kiroho kuweza kuzijua. Na bato amiri mili yetu asiko bitke naye. Na kuweza kuakomesha. Age naye agite Unaweza kuwa unajikata kila siku. Kwa sababu mtu fulani mahali fulani. Ya jamii yako. Alikuwa amefanya maagano. Katika madhabahu fulani mstudi. Na kaambiwa mwaga damu ya kidole yako. Hapa kwa hii madhabahu. Na kila siku. Ukienda vita utashinda. Na labda baadaye huyo mtu akafa na baada ya kufa hakuna mtu mwenye alienda kumamisha ile maagano so ile madhabahu that altar you went to will demand the blood from the family members and I want to tell you today demons doesn't suck every blood demons identify Uh, the blood dns and group of the blood wanajua kikundi ya damu that's why demons niposa mapepo that operate with a certain cla clan ambao inafanya kazi katika uko fulani they look alike wizinafanana the character of the people of a certain group tabia ya watu wa kikundi fulani they look alike zinafanana if you find a challenge in kericho ukimpata mkalenzi hapa kericho and go to eldoret na uende kule eldoret and other places na mahali kwingine those people look alike hao watu wanafanana their characters look the same tabia yao zinafanana because the demons of challenge in people kwa sababu mapepo ya watu wa challenge operate in their own way inafanya kazi katika njia yao demons are operating with kikuyu people mapepo ambayo inafanya kazi na watu wa kikuyu operate in their own way inafanya kazi katika njia The ones that operate with Luo people operate in their own way. They have their own versions. But today through the blood of Jesus I'm going to cancel every pattern in my life. Can somebody say amen? That's why that's what we have we call it 
blood pattern. Ndio ile tunaita ile kufanana kwa damu ama mtindo. Things happen. Mambo yanatendeka. I like. Ambayo inafanana. Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When there is an altar. Wakati kuna madhabahu. That is not broken. Ambayo haijavunjwa. In your backyard. Katika nyumba yako. Or from your clan. Ama katika uko wako. That is not addressed properly. Ambayo haijashughulikiwa vizuri. It can affect your education. Inaweza ikaadhiri elimu yako. It can affect your work. Inaweza ikaadhiri kazi yako. It can affect your career. Inaweza ikaadhiri kazi yako. And I want to tell you. Na ninataka nikwambie. When those things look after your life. Wakati hizo vitu zinatafuta maisha yako. They don't ask for visas. Haiwezi kuitisha visa. They just fly with you anyway in the world. Inapana wewe kila mahali popote ulimwengu. And they will haunt you anywhere. Na zitakusumbua popote pale. And you don't deal with them. Na usipozishughulikia. Even if you think you have gone high. Hata ukifikiria umeenda juu sana. Satanic altars can pull you down. Madhabahu ya kishetani inaweza kukuvuta chini. Your life useless. Na kufanya maisha yako kuwa bure. By the blood of Jesus today. Kwa damu ya Yesu siku ya leo. I'm going to silence every altar. Inaenda kunyamazisha kila madhabahu. I'm speaking negative against my life. Ambayo inanena hasi kinyume na can somebody say Jesus? Any satanic altar. Kila madabau ya kishetani. In my family. Katika familia yangu. That is releasing evils. Abai na chilia maovu. To destroy my generation. Kuharibu kisasi changu. I silence it. Nina inyamazisha. Through your blood. Kupitia damu yako. Hallelujah. Praise be the name of the Lord. Jina la buwana lipewe sifa. In the days of Moses, katika nyakati za Musa, they erected an altar on the desert. Walijenga madhabahu kule jangwani. And God told him to make sure that he do it according to the instructions and the pattern from heaven. Na Mungu akamwambia hakikishe amejenga kulingana na maagizo na mfumo wa mbinguni. Because the altar they built in on the desert, kwa sababu ile madhabahu walijenga kule jangwani, was a shadow of the real Ili, so Moses was asked by God Musa na Mungu to sprinkle the blood of the animal damu ya wanyama to the altar and all vessels in it katika madhabahu na vyombo vyote ndani yake then to the people na kwa watu pia so that the sacrifice in the altar ili ile madhabahu iliyo kwenye ile sadaka ama dhabihu iliyo kwenye madhabahu what the altar will speak na kile madhabahu Itanena, will speak on behalf of all the people. Itanena kwa niaba ya watu wote. So altar is very strong. Madhabahu ina nguvu sana. Am I talking to anyone? Je, namuongelesha yeyote? I know I cannot read the whole scriptures in the Bible. Siwezi nikasoma maandiko yote kwenye Biblia. Because of time. Kwa sababu ya muda. But I want to tell you. Lakini nataka nikwambie. If you are a strong Christian. Kama wewe ni Mkristo mwenye nguvu. And your home there is an altar. Na kwenu kuna madhabahu. And that altar is not destroyed. Na hiyo madhabahu haijaribiwa. Even if you try to go far. Hata ukijaribu kwenda mbali. The moment that altar receive a certain sacrifice from your family members. Wakati ile madhabahu bao itapokea dhabihu kutoka that kwa watu wa familia will still speak hiyo madhabahu bado on behalf of the family and on your behalf itaongea kwa niaba ya familia na kwa niaba yako you find yourself you are a devoted christian ndio posa unajipata wewe ni mkristo umejitoa sana when it come to family get together lakini ikifika wakati wa familia kukutana pamoja you will be forced to the family members utalazimishwa kuwa pamoja na watu wa familia and you will go home and eat with your people na utaenda nyumbani na ule na watu wako and you not ask them why are they why the day is not i call na wote wauliza ni kwa nini wamechinja lakini we utakula tu. I want to tell you. Nataka nikwambie. Eating is a way of communion. Kukula ni njia ya kuwa pamoja. It's a way of agreement. Ni njia ya kukubaliana. It's a way of covenant. Ni njia ya agano. So when you eat something. Ukila kitu. That is prepared by the family members. Ambayo imeandaliwa na watu wa familia. And not knowing the foundation of what you are eating. Na ujui msingi ya kile unakula. Or the source of it. Ama imetoka wapi. That what affects the family members. Kile inaadhiri watu wa familia. Automatically will affect you. Moja kwa moja itakuadhiri pia. That's why God told Abraham. Niposa Mungu akamwambia Abraham. Come out of your kindred. Toka kwa watu wako. Because I want to take you far. Kwa sababu nataka nikuelekee 
you will not be coming for family get together. If God wants to consecrate you, He must create an enmity between you and your people. So that you cannot be party again of their altars. That somebody say yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. I say you will be today. Nasema utakombolewa siku ya leo. I don't want this kind of problems here. Please. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Aha. Uh -huh. Listen. Skiza. Amen. Amina. I learned that when Moses wakati Musa sprinkled the blood alinyunyiza damu upon the altar juu ya madhabahu he made sure alihakikisha that the blood tongues ya kwamba damu will touch every vessel itaguza kila chombo in the altar katika madhabahu then to everybody na kwa kila mtu so that all the souls of Israel ili ya kwamba watu wote wa Israeli will be combined to one altar itashikanishwa katika madhabahu moja and the God of all that altar na Mungu wa ile madhabahu will release a word to the lives of all the people ataachilia neno kwa watu wote who is connected to that altar through the blood wanaunganika kwa ile madhabahu kupitia damu I speak in the name of Jesus if there is an altar in your family which requires your blood which requires your money which requires your children I command that altar to die I command that altar to burn I command that altar to come down somebody say yes Jesus Hallelujah. put your hands together to the Lord be seated, please. Some people say we lost people every month in our family. Maybe there is a spiritual deity and there is a spiritual altar that is eaten somewhere that need to be appeased by the death of the family members. So that's why death recurs and recurs and recurs. You bury one person this year. Next year you will bury another one. Next year is your cousin in the long run. Next year is your cousin in Eldoret. Next year is your brother in Busia. Because there is an Eden deity. And a satanic altar. Which need the souls of the family members. But because of ignorance. But the Bible says. My people perish because of lack of knowledge. I pray today. That God will open your eyes so that you can look at those things and destroy every shrine, every sacred pillar. May you destroy them today in the name of Jesus. Hey. Hey.